Welcome to this crash course in getting started with Canva. In the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to walk through how to start using templates, how to create your own designs, how to edit them, even how to create videos and animations right within Canva. I've already signed up for an account, which in the next section, you'll see me walk through each aspect of this quick crash course in much more detail. But as a new student, wanting to learn Canva, you might want to just jump right in and start creating. And that's what this lesson is all about. From the home page, you can find templates for any kind of design. Here you can click docs, whiteboards, presentations, great for things like slideshow, social media, which is what many of us will be creating graphics for. And then you can scroll down and you can find popular sizes. So you can find square posts. It shows the resolution below it, Facebook posts, stories, etc. Or you can continue to scroll and find actual templates. So let's just click see all for Instagram posts. And even though it says Instagram, it's a square template that you could use for all kinds of things. And then you can find one that works for you. Some of these are going to be pro templates and that's the paid Canva account. We can filter those out by choosing price and choosing free. And now we know any of these we can get started with and use ourselves. And once you've found one that you like, just click on it and it's going to ask you to customize this template and then it's going to open it up in the Canva editor. You can also create a design from scratch with any size you want by clicking create design and choose custom size and then you could input the width and height that you want. The other thing you can do is you can search for content. For example, maybe I need a birthday invite. I can search for birthday invite and then those templates will start to appear. So I like this one over here. So if I click on this, don't get confused by this print with Canva option because for certain templates, you have that option to actually print out cards and things like that. But really, if I just want to send this via email or social media or text or whatever, we can still customize this template and save it as an image. We can go print it ourselves somewhere else, etc. Once you have a design open, this is our canvas. This is where we can edit everything. On the left hand side, notice that we have different tabs where we can add text, we can find different elements like shapes and graphics and stickers, photos and videos. Back in the design tab, if you are in any project under templates, you can see other templates that fit this size. So say you started liking this one, but you're like, actually, I think I'm gonna go a little bit more classy. I can click on that template and it will automatically change to that template. I can undo that by clicking this button up here. Now there's so much you can do with Canva, but most of you are probably just wanting to know how can I swap this image? How can I change this text? Maybe adjust the colors and the sizing of things. So to do that with text, pretty much like any other text editor, you can click into this text. I'm going to put in my name. And then we want to swap this image so we can go to uploads. We can upload a photo of ourself and I can click and drag and drop it right into this little frame. Now, once that photo is in there, I need to make an adjustment to the positioning of it so I can double click and I can move photos within a frame. There's lots of cool editing tools as well to make this photo black and white. I'm gonna also adjust the size, so I'll make this a little bit bigger so I'm more centered in this bubble frame. I can select this king's crown, I could move it around, and now I want to edit this photo. So to edit any layer, there are all kinds of options up in the toolbar. Your standard text editing options like fonts, size, color of your text, positioning, effects, and all kinds of things. And similarly for photos, I have an edit photo option. Here, there's so many things. We see this later on in the course, but under filters, we can scroll down and find a mono filter like film or noir, classic, something like that. Or we can edit this 
from scratch by going to our adjust sliders and go down and we're gonna drop our opacity to black and white and then maybe just go back up to our light settings and make everything a little bit brighter to get that sort of softer vibe. Maybe bring our blacks down just to give it that sort of flat matte sort of style, matching what was originally there. We can adjust the colors of things. So these little lines that are coming out from the photo, maybe we want to change it to something more colorful. So if we select that color option, there's different ways to find colors. There's some default colors that Canva has here. We can choose colors that were within the photo we added to this design, or we can click and create any color here with this color picker up here. Now we can find the color that we think stands out or works the best. That's kind of a nice color. Now, if we want to match that color with of these lines, we can select the color and that color appears here because it's now in our document colors, making it super simple to adjust the color of anything, text, lines, graphics, etc., with a couple clicks. So this is looking great, but I want to add one more element to it. Let's go to our elements and I'm going to search for roller skates. Maybe this is a roller skating party. Now pops up graphics, photos, videos, but I want to look at graphics. So I'm going to see all for graphics and I'm trying to find something that matches the style of this design already. Something a little bit more chunky, maybe this one here. So I've added this by just clicking onto it and it adds to our design and I can resize it, reposition it. And that's good, but the colors are off. This yellow doesn't match this yellow. So I can change those colors by selecting this color up here and choosing the yellow from our crown. Maybe I want the highlight and edges to be black instead of this blue. So I'm gonna select that blue and choose black. And now it starts to fit in a little bit more with our design. Maybe change that green to the purple. The pink's pretty nice still. So I'm gonna leave that like so. I might want to duplicate this maybe put another skate somewhere. So maybe I wanna put a skate kinda of up here in the background. So to adjust the positioning or layering of an image or graphic, just select position and we can move backwards or jump to the back. And maybe we even wanna blend this into the background and just drop the transparency quite a bit just to add sort of that cool element of something in the background but not overtaking our design. So that's under transparency and transparency is available for any layer. So once you've adjusted your design and you want to share it with the world, the easiest way to do this is by clicking share and downloading it to your device. So you'll click download and now you can choose PNG is great because it's super high quality. The file size is going to be a little bit bigger and you might want to change that to JPEG. The quality is still going to be high, but the file size is going to be lower. With a pro account, you can adjust all of these things and customize them. But all I'm going to do is click download now, and I'm going to save this. And now I have this invite ready to share with the world as a JPEG image. What if we want to post this to social media and add some animation to it? This is simple to do with Canva. So if I select any of these elements or just the background by selecting that background, I can choose animate and our page animation options show up. So I can hover over any of these animations, party is pretty cool. And when I click on it, it applies this animation to this page. I can choose to have it animate just at the beginning at the exit or both. Now, if I wanna customize an individual animation, I can click on that element and then I can change how I want it to appear. Do I want it to pop or wipe? I can scroll down for more, I can have it drift or I can have it animate after the entrance. If I scroll all the way down, we have these motion effects like wiggle or flicker or rotate or pulse, which is pretty cool. 
So I'm going to have that pulse there, and I'm also going to add pulse to this skate down here. So scroll, select that skate, add pulse. Now to preview what this looks like, we can click this preview button up here, and we can see what this would look like throughout the entire animation. It's five seconds right now, and we see that because it says five seconds. If we want to adjust the timing of this, we can click this edit timing button and make it shorter, for example. And now it's three seconds, a little bit shorter. And to export this as a video, we can click share, download, and then we need to change the file type to MP4 video or animated GIF. So animated GIFs are great for sharing in text messages, emails, putting on a website, and the animation will just run continuously versus an MP4 will be a video file. And on some social platforms like Instagram if you or Facebook, if you post an MP4 video, it might automatically play. However, it might not repeat on some platforms. And that's where an animated GIF might be the better option. It really depends on where you are sharing it. So I'm going to save it again as my skating party. And now we can see my animated GIF and see how it animates right here. So this might be something that you post as a story or a reel on social media and share it with your friends. Obviously not necessarily a birthday invite, but using a Canva template like this and animating it for any kind of purpose. I'm sure this video is getting a little bit longer than 10 minutes now, but I quickly just wanna show you some other things that you're probably wondering, wondering about like text. So I'm going to go ahead and click presentations and then just create a blank 16 by nine presentation. When I'm on the design tab, again, we have our templates here. So we can search for any kind of slideshow, for example, clean, modern slideshow, and it will pop up with templates for us. So maybe we want something colorful like this. If I click on this presentation, we can add all 11 pages so I, I'm gonna do that for you to see. So now we have all of these pages that we can edit, or I'm gonna undo that, and I'm just going to select one of them. So say we just want this one here, and then we can add a page, and we can choose the specific one that we want. Maybe we want to duplicate this page. For example, maybe we've adjusted some things. Phil's slideshow, we add our points, and we want to duplicate this page. We can easily do that with this page selected in our pages mode by selecting it and pressing Command D, that'd be Control D on a PC, or just hovering over this menu and choosing Duplicate Page. Now, if you're not in that Pages view and you're on this view, then there's another way to do that by clicking this Duplicate Page up here. And that adds, adds another page to our slideshow. Let's add some text. Maybe we want to add a little website URL down at the bottom left. So you can choose the text option over here. There's a lot of preset combinations that you can just click and it will add that text to your design. But if we just want some basic text, just click add a heading. We can move this heading around and we can add our website, for example, videoschool.com. We're going to adjust this text box and the size just by clicking and hovering over the edge of the box, or we can adjust all of this up here in our toolbar. For example, we can type in a specific font size. We can adjust the alignment so it's to the left of this text box. We can adjust the colors, maybe something a little bit different, maybe just like a dark gray might be cleaner. We could even adjust the transparency so maybe let's just make this a little bit blend into the background which might work if we have like an image or something in the background and now if we put this on this bottom left corner of this page what we can do is we can copy it just command c on a mac control c go to our next page and paste it command v command v and that's an easy way to start adding things from one page to the next. And then if we just duplicate this page, obviously it will still be there in the bottom left corner for our next slide. Say we want to add an image to this slide. Let's go to elements. Let's search for an image. 
I'm searching for an image of Hawaii. Many of these image might be pro, so it's going to have a watermark if you add it to your slideshow, see that watermark, unless you have a pro account, or you can choose a free one. By simply clicking an image, it will add it to our slides. What if I want it to be the background or take up the full page? I can click and drag it, and once you get to this spot where it kind of looks like that, you just drop it and now it covers the whole page, but it's still above some of the elements. So I can just go to position and choose to the back. And maybe I drop the opacity of this because I just want it to sort of subtly be there in the background. However, what if I want a photo that's in sort of a little circle or in a shape? We can go back to our elements and go down to frames and here we have all sorts of frames that we can look at. Or you could literally just search for something like blob frame. And these frames will pop up that have these like organic shapes that kind of go along with our shapes that we have here. And now back where our elements are, we have our recently used photos and we can drop that photo right into that frame and we can make any adjustments to it there. All right, so you would go through, edit your slides, and once you're done, you can save it as a PDF. So share, download, here you would choose PDF standard, unless you're sharing it for print, or if you wanna download a PowerPoint, you can do that as well. Or if you want to just export them as individual images, or just pick one of these and export it as an image, you can choose that one. But I'm going to go ahead and save it as a PDF and I'm going to choose all pages and click download. And now we have this slideshow ready to go. There is so much more you can do with Canva and you're going to learn it in this course. And in the next section, we're going to sort of back up. And if this crash course felt a little quick, we're going to walk through each step of the process from setting up your account, starting a new project, using templates, using all of the different elements, using the toolbar and everything else, even diving deeper into video, as well as the AI tools that Canva has in their magic studio. We're gonna take a peek at that. That's all coming up in the next section, but for now, I hope this helps you sort of just jump in and get started using Canva. Thanks for watching and thanks for being here, and we'll see you in the next lessons.